Hey everybody, it's Ben and Beta here. And today I wanna to talk to you about the 2024 Tacoma. And now that Misty's had a chance to ride in it, drive it, I wanted to give our impressions. So our likes, our dislikes, and a couple things we still need to see about a little bit. So first of all, let's start with a few things that we like. Comfort is definitely king. The Tacoma is extremely comfortable. Misty commented on that, and I have felt it just got actually more comfortable over time. I initially thought the seats were a little bit hard, but after a little bit of time, they seem to have softened up and they support your legs really well. They're pretty much infinitely adjustable and you can definitely get comfortable for a really long trip. And Misty also felt that these seats were very comfortable and she has quite a few back problems, but was having no problems getting adjusted into the seat and thought it was good. Next, let's talk about power and handling. There's been a lot of talk on this topic specifically. I have to say for me personally, the 24 Taco is more than powerful enough. I have never run into an instance yet where I needed more power. It was instantly responsive and so much better than what the Tucson was. Here's what Misty had to say when she got the opportunity to see what the Taco was like in terms of power. Just hammer it. There you go. Well done. Better than the Tucson. So again, overall, I think both of us feel like it's just much better than what we had before. Some people will think it's lacking and that's fine. But again, power wise, if you're merging on the highway, you need to get in front of somebody, you need to pass somebody. I've had absolutely no problems whatsoever. It's way more than adequate. I'm sure the hybrids will be even better in that department, but we're happy with the gas engine in Tacoma. So I think most people will be as well. Now let's talk about a smooth ride. So I think a lot of trucks in this segment are pretty good but the Tacoma has been fantastic in this department. The ride's been just as good as the Tucson. And the only time I had an issue with it was right after we replaced the stock tires, which I just wanna say the stock tires rode very well. And I will have a video on a comparison between the stock tires and the Falcon Wild Peak AT4Ws in the snow. So that's coming up, look for that in a little bit. Overall, ride quality is great. The one issue that I had was when I switched tires to the AT4Ws, they initially overinflated them a little bit and the ride became rough pretty much instantly. And I was like, okay, this is a little bit rough. And it seemed worth the upgrade at, at first. When I checked the tire pressures, they were pretty high. They were almost at like 38 PSI in the new tires. And the recommended PSI on the stock tires was 30 and the AT4Ws in the stock size can also be in that same range. So I lowered them down and now they ride exactly the same. They're quite good. And I'm guessing they would have done a little bit better even in the snow comparison than they did had they been closer to the same PSI. So I have no complaints about the ride. Suspension is great. It eats up potholes just fine. And I don't feel the road as much now that the tire pressure is at the right setting. So I think people are gonna really be happy with the ride of the Tacoma as well. Next, let's talk about camera confidence. The 2024 Toyota Tacoma and the premium package has cameras everywhere, it seems. So the surround view cameras are excellent for backing up, for parking, also for off-roading, which we'll be testing coming up here very shortly. And then you have the digital rear view mirror camera, which is also awesome, so you can see out the back. Even with the mid-height rack that I put on from Kuat, I still am able to use that digital rear view mirror. That will go away when I put the tent on, but I can take the tent off and still use it, so that's great. The cameras are really clear, they have a lot of different views, and they give you a lot of good information about where your tires are going, all that kind of stuff but uh, the cameras are really good. I'm very impressed, especially on the 14 inch screen. Next, this one was something I was a little bit worried about. When I did my test drive in the SR5, it had the JBL package with the detachable speaker from JBL, the flex speaker, and it just sounded okay. And I was listening at that point to just the satellite radio that came with the vehicle because it was just a test drive. But as soon as I hooked up Android Auto to the vehicle, I was very impressed with the sound. It's not the best system I've ever heard, but it does sound good for all types of music. I think there's enough low end punch. Some people are gonna disagree. And again, audio stuff is kind of subjective, but I was actually more impressed than I thought I was gonna be. So I would call this a win, but I would say that there are people reporting problems with their system where they have to turn it way up to be able to hear anything. I've had none of those problems. That could be a CarPlay issue. It could be something else. I'm not sure, but for me, the system's working pretty good and sounds great. When you don't have that system on, we can talk about peace and quiet because the cabin is very quiet on the road. This was also something I was a little bit concerned about from driving the SR5. The premium package 
Um, the TRD off-road has some extra dampening and it's very quiet inside that cabin. They also pipe in a little bit of sound for the engine into the cabin and I actually like it. I think it sounds pretty good and Misty even commented on it and thought she kind of liked that sound too. She's like, ooh, that sounds kind of good. And, it's, and it is a fake sound, but I don't think it's bad. I do think it'd be good if you could turn it off because some people might not want it, but I don't think it's distracting and I think it sounds pretty good. So I was kind of impressed with that as well. And the overall quality of the cabin and interior has also been good and it's part of that just really good peace and quiet inside the cabin when you're driving your truck. The next thing I want to talk about is the digital wallet key and the freedom that it gives you. So what's great about this is it fits in my tiny little wallet here, no problems whatsoever. And I never have to think about it. I'm pretty much always taking my phone or my wallet with me when I'm leaving. So I just attach this to my phone and my keys with me. I can lock and unlock the vehicle just by touching the handles and it starts every time. I've had absolutely no issues with it. I think this is a great alternative to using the digital key on your phone, which we'll talk about in the dislikes. Some people do like the key fobs. Some people even like to put their keys in the ignition, but I'm really loving this. It makes it so I don't have to think about anything. I just leave and away we go. So the digital wallet key is a welcome addition and the best part is it doesn't require a subscription. Next, tech heaven in general. So you got the 14 inch screen that's very clear and I really do like that screen. It's easy to operate. I've had no issues with the touch screen on it whatsoever. So nice, nice and big. It's not really in the way for seeing anything either. Just makes navigation very easy or finding music or whatever you're gonna do, simple. I have had some issues with Android Auto not connecting, but if you restart the vehicle, it connects and it's fine. And I've had a couple audio drops here and there, but that seems to be getting better over time. We'll see. That is a little bit annoying, but I can always plug it in and that's fine. The screen itself, that part of it is really good. And hopefully some software updates will get rid of some of the bugs with the disconnection of Android Auto. Along with the tech, I do like the digital instrument cluster that Toyota has, but we'll talk about some issues with that in a minute as well. Overall though, as far as switching driving modes or your off-road modes, those types of things, it's pretty simple to see what you're doing. I like that you have customization of the system, even if that doesn't work all the time. While I also love technology, I also like physical controls for things that should be physical. All of the systems in the Tacoma for changing modes, all of that kind of stuff is all physical controls or turning on your differential lock. Everything that should be physical is physical. You have buttons for heated, heated seats, heating steering wheels, the cooled seats, all that kind of stuff. And I think it's really important that you have physical buttons for those things. So I'm glad that Toyota took the time to actually add those. The physical controls in conjunction with the technology features make the Toyota Tacoma just a great place to spend some time. So well done on that, Toyota. One of the other things I really like about this vehicle are the driver assistance features and they work very well. So adaptive cruise, we put it on, keeps you in the center of the lane. These also sort of work in the city. It'll actually slow you down when you get closer to caught like traffic. So if you have your foot off the gas, and you're like coming up to a light, it'll actually slow down the car. But it feels kind of like regenerative braking when you stop at like a stoplight. But between that, the digital rear view mirror and the blind spot monitoring, this is one of the better systems that I've seen with these features. That's another definite like about this vehicle. But let's be honest, not everything is perfect with every vehicle. It doesn't matter what you buy, nothing's gonna be perfect, and this vehicle isn't perfect either. So I have a few dislikes as well. So we have some software glitches. The driver display can be frustrating at times. And what I mean by that, while it's nice to see all the information and you can customize it, when you do customize it and you shut the vehicle off and you come back, sometimes the stuff that you had customized isn't there anymore. An example of that is the tire pressures. I like to monitor my tire pressures. One of the customizations I made was to have the tire pressures on the left-hand side of the gauge cluster. And when it works, it's great, but every time I shut the vehicle off and come back in, they're gone. And the only way to get them back is to long press OK on the steering wheel, then move over to the left-hand side, then switch it back down to the tire pressures. Then it'll display for the rest of that drive, and as soon as I turn it off, it doesn't work again. This is definitely something other people have complained about too. Again, I love the fact that you can customize it, but it needs to work every time. Otherwise it's just frustrating and I don't wanna be playing with my steering wheel all the time to see those things. You do have the option to have three different views, but if none of them are gonna work, then that's kind of a pointless feature. So I'm hoping that's something that can be fixed in software. Then I've also talked about the Android Auto issues not working very well. And I've also had issues with the digital key, which we'll talk about in a little bit too. Those are my, likely all software things. So there are some bugs and gremlins in the system. I do think it's all something that Toyota can fix and hopefully they do listening to feedback from its customers. So speaking of the digital key, 
The digital key is kind of a dud for me. I love the Tesla system, and I very rarely ever had a problem with that system at all. Toyota decided to go a different direction. They made the digital key part of the subscription package, which is not great, and it just doesn't work most of the time for me. So I put the digital key in my phone. Sometimes I could lock and unlock the doors. Sometimes I couldn't, but most of the time I couldn't start the car. Once I got inside, I had to open my phone, open the Toyota app, and then at some point we would start. Not super convenient. The second part that's not very great about this is if you're outside of cell phone coverage, the digital key won't work at all. So if you decide to go hunting for a day or go for a hike out in the wilderness and you only use your digital key, when you get back from your activity, you won't be able to open your doors or start your vehicle. So it's not a very well implemented system. And the fact that it requires a subscription makes no sense. A digital key should just be something that works no matter what, it's a key. A key needs to work every single time. I wouldn't recommend using it, but you know, maybe it works better for you. Maybe they'll improve it. Maybe they'll change it over time. But right now the digital key isn't great. I would just use the wallet key, which works every single time. Next, we have some subscription service blues. And what I mean by that is, when I first turned on the application for the Toyota app, I was getting notifications like crazy. So there are a number of different subscriptions that you can have. You've got your wireless internet subscription through AT&T. You've got your connected services. You have like three or four different services you can choose from. Now I have a trial for most of those for a while. My Wi-Fi one runs out at the end of the month and I won't be renewing that, but there's just a lot of them. And the app itself just has a lot of notifications about your doors are unlocked, your hoods open. It gets to be a little bit overwhelming. So I've shut most of those off. So the subscription slash notification pieces of the Toyota system are not fantastic. The next one is payload puzzlement. And I'm puzzled by this because the Tacoma has a 1200 pound payload. And that's a little bit disappointing, especially for somebody who wants to do some overlanding in a truck. And it's also disappointing because Toyota has touted up to 1700 pounds of payload, but it seems to be that that's gonna happen on the hybrid models, which are gonna be heavier right out of the gate with a battery and an electric motor. And that doesn't really make sense. So I'm curious as to why Toyota ended up having a 1200 pound payload on the gas models, but it's gonna be actually higher with the hybrids. I know they're beefing up some of the components, but why not make it 1500 in the gas models? I guess it's to encourage people to spend more money, but we weren't gonna spend any more money. The new Ranger has 1500 pounds of payload, and the Chevys, they do better in that category as well. So I'm a little bit disappointed by that because we're gonna be really close to that number quite often when we're going on our overlanding trips. Next, we have the shrinking gas tank. So Toyota chose to go from a 21 gallon tank to about an 18 gallon tank. And I'm not sure exactly why they made that move, but that's three gallons of gas that we don't have in our tanks. And while the gas mileage overall that people are getting is pretty good with the Tacoma, I do wish they would have kept that at least 20 or 19. Something like that would have been nice to try to get 350 to 400 miles out of a tank instead of being, trying to eke out 300 to 350. Yeah, that shrinking gas tank just wasn't great. So now it's on to some of the will sees. One of the things in the will sees is the gas mileage mystery. I'm not sure how Toyota calculates the range you have in your gas tank, but it doesn't seem to move much for me. It's stuck at 14.7, 14.8 miles per gallon, even though if you actually calculated the physical mileage I've driven so far in the first tank of gas, it's well above that. So I'm kind of confused on like what's going on there. I'm hoping it learns and kind of gets better over time, but I'm definitely gonna reset the whole system when I fill up with my next tank to get real world gas mileage. I have been idling a lot, so that might have a lot to do with it, I'm not sure. And I'm hoping to see like closer to what other people are reporting, which is like, 19, 20 to 23 miles per gallon on their vehicles. I am at 6,000 feet above sea level, so I expect it to be a little bit less than others, but I don't expect it to be, you know, 10 gallons less than others. So we'll see what it is on the new tank. I'll definitely do an update video on gas mileage as we drive a lot more coming up here in the next couple months. The next we'll see is the rear seat and cargo room in the back. So we do have a dog and she fits in the back just fine, no problems whatsoever. So that part's great but there isn't very much room between the back seat and the front seat to put gear and things like that, which is usually where we pack a lot of things when we would go overlanding. Obviously we have the truck bed and that's fine, but some things you might wanna keep in the cab itself. So we'll see how that goes. There is some under seat storage as well. We haven't played around with that too much, but that's probably gonna get taken up with tools and that kind of thing. But we'll see how the cargo room and the rear seat room plays out over time. The next one is power potential, but it's not the power you're thinking of. As I said before, the power in the engine is great. 
One thing I haven't got a chance to test out yet, but I'm interested in is the bed power. So when you're moving, the bed power in, in my understanding is only 100 watts. So for overlanding, that's not fantastic. When you're parked, it's supposed to be up to 400 watts. And that would even be fine if you just parked for lunch and you got 400 watts while you were eating lunch and you powered up your battery system because I'm going to be doing portable batteries. I'm not going to build a whole system out in the back of the truck because I don't want to do that. But one thing I haven't tested out yet that happened on the last models was when you would plug in a battery to the AC outlet, which it should draw 400 watts, it actually would just turn off because that was not a pure sine wave inverter that they're using. And I'm hoping they fix that, but I haven't tested it out. I will be doing that soon as well. And the last one is the app itself. It allows you to lock and unlock your doors, but I don't do a lot of remote starting and those types of things. So it's actually a pretty well-designed app. They just pushed out a new update and I do like a lot of the features that are inside there, but it isn't perfect, I would say. So we'll see if we use it a lot or not. All right, so that's kind of what I thought about it. You heard a little bit about what Misty thought, but let's get some more thoughts from Misty and see what she thinks about the vehicle. All right, so what are your thoughts? It's big. It's big, all right. The braking's good. Did it update the brakes? Can you, do you remember a little bit about what it was like to drive the other one? Yeah, it was like I had to stamp on them like yeah. way, well ahead of time. It's funny that it's, the wheel is definitely hot at your 10 and 2, less so down here. Uh -huh. What do you think of the digital rear view mirror? It's interesting, that's for sure. Takes a little getting used to, but I do like it. Here's what it looks like without it. Oh yeah, I do like it. You can actually like see what's happening. Well, first um, impressions. Better than this is the Tucson. It brakes well, it accelerates well. It's just baked for me. All right, so those are our likes, our dislikes, and some things that we'll have to see about over time with the 2024 Tacoma TRD Off-Road in the premium package. I'll have a lot more content coming out around this vehicle. I have the tire comparison that we talked about. We'll be doing a little bit of off-roading in it. There's obviously a lot of overlanding coming up. I also did a full graphene ceramic coating on the vehicle, and I have a video about all the products and the process I used for that, so I'm excited to share that one. And then I also put a Kuat Ibex rack on the back of the vehicle, and I'll have a lot more to share in around that, including an installation video, so check the channel out for those. But I'm also curious, like, what do you guys think of the 24 Tacoma? What questions do you have? Other owners, are you experiencing some of the same likes and dislikes, or is it performing differently for you? So leave your comments below. Also, I have some affiliate links in the description, and if you use any of those, it does help with the channel, and I appreciate that, so thank you to those who do that. And if the affiliate links aren't for you, if you can just hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, share out this video with other people who you think might be interested in it, I'd appreciate that too. So I hope you enjoyed this. Again, leave some comments below. Remember to live your life in beta, and we'll see you next time.